Hey guys, welcome back. Check out this video by Robert Kiyosaki. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe in giving to the poor. But you're giving knowledge to the poor. Yes, that's a very big difference. You see people say, well, why don't you give the poor money? So the only problem with that is just creates more poor people. You give a man a fish, you get a lot of people who want more fish, you know? But you teach them to fish. But you are the Robin Hood of knowledge because I see you giving this knowledge out and yeah. do, do the rich people cringe and say, don't tell them that, Robin? Yes, yes, yes. Don't tell people what, they, what you know. Right. Keep them poor. But, you know, unfortunately, the poor, the poor will always be amongst us because it starts up here. Right. It's that fear mentality. It's, it's in their words, you know, and the words become flesh. But when they say, I can't afford it or I can't do that, they go down. They become what they say. All right, Kirby, we, oh, you want to jump in? His mouth moved. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, he said a lot of, enlightening things that i think go over people's head um the one thing before i deep dive into the video the one question i want to ask you what do you think is the most key point that he said in that video in your view that being poor starts up here in your mind i think because if you think about it if people watching think about this and it, to what he said as well about you know it's in their words it's in their thoughts about them being poor when you hear people always say like he even mentioned it i can't afford that but it might sound cliche coming from him but i hear it often myself from you know talking to people when they speak about anything financially and maybe something they want to buy something they want to do there's always like a joke made but in a negative manner regarding money because it hints at the fact that they don't have enough money or they're unable in their eyes to make that money. And they keep that mentality. And it, so it's a mentality that holds them back because they almost believe that the only way to make money is from their day job. And so they've become so used to that cycle, so used to that as a habit, that the only way that they can produce an income comes from their day job. And that is not true, especially in the world we live in today with technology. There's plenty of ways to make money, but they prefer to stay in that shell and not try to look out into the real world, look at different opportunities. The only opportunities that they seem to have is get a different job, get a better paying job or go back to college and get a, another degree, get some type of certificate, which is not necessary. And so I think that it's just it just starts in their mind you know when you start to think that you cannot achieve more you won't even try and i mean that was one thing that i initially you know wanted to change from from the start about myself and i want one thing and and the viewers i believe they can relate with this you know, when you're growing up as a kid and you want something from the store or you want to get a toy and then you ask your parents for the toy, you always hear, oh, I can't afford that. I can't afford that from your parents. Now, Robert Kiyosaki, he didn't say it in this short, but he said it on another video. When you say, I can't afford it, you're making a statement. Your brain closes off. But if you ask yourself, how can I afford it? It opens your brain up to think of different ideas so just recently i just had this phenomenon happen and when robert kiyosaki i heard him say that last statement i just said uh, many years ago that's how i changed my mindset is how can i afford it instead of saying i can't afford it so alex as you know i just was doing a real estate deal i was uh, working with the new finance company that i never used before my taxes are complicated um so, but I wanted to give them an opportunity because they reached out and they said they can get the deal done. Fast forward two months, they still didn't get the deal done, which caused the seller. And I agree with the seller, ultimate frustration. And then, and then the seller said, hey, we're just going to put the house back on the market. And so I reached out to the realtor and, and then asked the realtor what was her thoughts behind it. And then she said, how about putting more earnest money down to give you more time to find another lender to do the deal? And then I thought like, well, the seller is already peed off because we're taking so long. So I'm going to ask for more time. And then I said, no, 
I knew I knew at the time I couldn't just buy, buy the deal, you know, pull out while I could, but that would have messed up other plans, other places. So I came to her with the alternative and I said, hey, call the seller and tell them to do X, Y, Z. We'll do it like this. And we just created a seller finance structure that was beneficial for him and beneficial for me. The realtor thought, oh, there's no way he's going to take that. But I said, just offer it. And then she called the seller, offered the, what I proposed, and he accepted right away. We closed two days later. So just because something is there and, and the normal construct of life, if something costs $100, you don't have $100, you don't just be like, oh, I can't afford it. It's how can I afford it? I mean, maybe you can't get it right now, but you can find alternatives to be able to afford it later. A statement closes the brain. A question opens the brain. And so going to what you said about it starts up here, that's 100% correct. Uh, the thing that stood out to me in that video, and it goes over people's head, but you hear it all the day in the media and news all over the world. When they said, when he said, don't, they ask you, why don't you just give the poor people money? And he said, if you give poor people money, you just make more poor people. Look at where we are right now. The U.S. government, the Federal Reserve, they printed trillions of dollars and gave it out to people that made under, you know, $150,000 a year. Stimulus checks, PPP loans, uh, enhanced unemployment, enhanced SNAP programs. They just got more money. For a majority of those people, it just created more poor people because they just bought more liabilities. They just found more ways to make uh, have monthly payments. So now look at it today. Inflation has risen. That extra stimulus money is not in the system. And then the poor people don't have money to meet their debt obligations. So now it's more people that's in the middle class that's going down to the poor class. It's more people that's in the upper middle class coming down to the lower middle class. Giving money, we've been giving money to Ukraine, Africa, Asian nations, uh, Mexican nations for decades now, speaking of the U.S. Their economic uh, situation hasn't improved. The only place that the economic situation has ever approved was in China. Gave them so much money. They had people with smarts. Now they're the second biggest uh, country as far as GDP in the world. But you give poor people money, you create more poor people. Just think about for when I'm talking to the viewers, just think about all the family members and friends you ever gave money to. Their financial situation didn't change. They were still poor and they were just calling you back again later asking for more money. That's if they paid you back for the first time they asked for money. Giving people, feeding a person for a day does not help them. Teaching somebody how to fish, like Robert Kiyosaki said in the video, is what's going to get them there. That's why we always talk about financial literacy, financial education, so people can in tune themselves to make the money themselves. That's why, why Alex... I refuse to take people money to invest it for them because their net worth is dependent on me. If I die and say, forget it, I don't want to do it no more. They're screwed. I'd rather teach them how to do it so they can go further on their life independent of me so they can do whatever they want to do. But that was the biggest thing I took out of the video. Yeah, those are good points too. Now to his point where he says the rich tell him don't, teach the poor people what you know have you gotten that from any rich people no i have not got that from uh rich people um i have been told you're wasting your time i've been told that many times you've been wasting you're wasting your time it don't matter how much you tell people they're still going to do what they want to do i've been told the hardest thing you can ever do in this world is try to tell somebody who work 40 hours a week what they need to do with their money so they can become financially secure. You know, most people leave their parents' house and they can't wait till they turn 18 to leave the house because they're tired of their parents telling them what to do. So when they go out and get a job, they feel they're grown, they can do whatever they want to do, which is fine. They can do what they, whatever they want to do. But trying to tell somebody what they need to do with money is, they tell me it's a fool's errand. They don't tell me don't do it. They just say it's a fool errand. You're wasting your time. Because most people are not going to listen. Most people are only going to listen to half of it. Even though what you're saying is true, they're only going to listen to half of it and still fail because they don't want to dedicate themselves. 
And Alex, when I met you, I told you, I said, I know you will be excited about the financial uh, education and literacy that you'll gain. You want to share with the world, but you'll be lucky if one out of a hundred people that you talk to ever listen. And then now I ask you fast forward from that conversation four or five years ago, how do as many people you talk to, how many actually listen and actually went through the grind like you going through? Like me? Yeah. Zero. There you go. There you go. I mean, how many people have reached financial independence that you talk to? Not not even say go hardcore as you has reached financial independence since you start talking to them. None. There's people that are maybe that already had financial independence and maybe they have a little bit more knowledge now, but I'm that, talking about people that don't have it. I'm talking about people that don't have it that have it. Yeah. None. How many people how many people you know that paid off all the uh consumer debt since you start talking to them? Like one. <laughs> yeah. But but the thing is they see you doing it and they see how uh carefree, how money is not a big issue for you now. They see it. Right. You want to know how they see it? You know they see it because they know to come to ask you for money because they know you have it. But they don't want to replicate it because they don't want to go through it. That is the big thing. And that's why they always tell me I'm wasting my time. They say don't tell them because the thing is the, the rich, the wealthy, they don't even care no more. I mean, at a time, probably when Robert Kiyosaki was you know, going at it, they were saying don't tell them because they thought, oh, everybody's going to listen and then everybody's going to achieve the good wealth and then we won't have the employees, the workers to go out there and grind for the nine to five. But now as they've seen it, no matter how much financial literacy information is put out, no matter by books by Benjamin Graham, David, I mean, Warren Buffett, Robert Kiyosaki, Chris Cohn, Grant Cardone, no matter whoever put it out, they can grow rich, rich man in Babylon. I can go on and on and on. No matter, no matter how much content is put out, the numbers have not changed over the years. The only thing that's changed is the middle class has got smaller because they don't listen and more people got poor. Some people got richer, but in the end of the game, the 1% is still a 1%, the 10% is still a 10% and the middle class is being dissipated and the poor is getting larger. So now they don't even care no more because they know people ain't going to listen. They understand the human psychology and the human psychology is most people want to be grown. They want to be separated from people telling them what to do. And it's not telling them what to do, it's helping them out. But telling somebody who work 9 to 5, 40, 50, 60 hours a week what to do with their money is a fool's errand. I can go on and on about stories about people when I was in the military and I was broke and I went on this journey and none of them still listen. They still call me today, ask for advice, and they still won't listen. This is 20, 30 years later. And so they're not worried about it no more. They're not worried about the middle class overtaking them and getting more money than them. They're not even worried, not even sweating no more because they know that they won't do a damn thing and they stuck in a cycle that they want to be in or they don't want to be in it, but they know they won't make the sacrifices to get out of it. Well, that means, guys, remember to hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, let us know what you think about this video in the comment section down below. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.